Thank you, <coughs> dear organizers. I'm sorry, I have a bit uh, a bad voice at the moment with the with a voice problem. I hope you can you can still hear me and understand me. Um, well, as I said, thank you, dear organizers, for letting me speak here, ladies and gentlemen, dear audience. <coughs> can you understand me somehow? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to go back from this very impressive, or some of this very impressive neurobiology that we already heard, and I could listen to just during the last talk, to the more radical question, where the, the element of experience could come from. To qualia, where it is actually located, or could be located, whether it's physical or not, and where they can be described by some formal, formal way, rather than going into neuroprocessing as a computational uh, issue. I think the last talk was, was more on this computational issue. And I do want to suggest uh, um, a very <clears throat> surprisingly simple, uh, yeah, a very simple issue. Um, because as a, as a physicalist, I'm actually suggesting two different physical domains. And between these domains, I have a particular relation, and I will try to focus on this relation that, in my view, can bind the radical issue of consciousness, qualia, how it feels to, to witness or see red, the redness in red. And I don't think it emerges from processes, as we have uh, heard uh, in the last talk this morning. It does not emerge from cognitive processes. It is more even, it's quite radical, it's not even subject to evolution either. Also, it's biological. There are many things that are not subject to evolution, also they are biological. Surprisingly, many things have never changed. For instance, life as such, life has not evolved. It's not subject to evolution. You either are alive or not. Okay, and the, uh, the key issue is the mirror. The mirror reflection, or if you want an inversion plus a rotation, however you look at it, however you uh, model the, the symmetry group that deals with it. And I think uh, the relation the mirror relation between, let's say, between a pair of, a mirror pair, left or right or whatever, um, I call it the sense relation, and uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's something very, very simple, and then allows me to define two different physical domains, and I put my point in the exchange between, two, between these two domains the transition between a mirror, when Alice goes into the mirror. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, biology has a primacy there uh, to explain a couple of things, because um, consciousness is a biological phenomenon. Uh, well, but it has a chemical and the physical and the mathematical aspect too. I will focus on the physical today, at the molecular or atomic level. And I can, I, I think that we can find something quite interesting in there. Okay, let's, let's go ahead. I give a couple of examples, demonstrations, and then I try to outline my point very shortly in a kind of uh, 10 minutes uh, summary, uh, focusing on some geometries underlaying the model and some dynamics. So even comparing geometry with dynamics somehow in this outline. And then finally, I, I do propose a, a, a rather perhaps anthropic conclusion relating the results that I have from biology to mathematicians, biological entities, 
who do mathematics. And I think that's quite an interesting point as well. Okay, let's, let's go ahead. We do need some premises, perhaps, and I do suggest first the micro-psychistic or pan-psychistic premise or conjecture. I will alter it finally, because I think it's not quite right, but I'm just, in short, summarizing it. If experience, and with experience, I do mean, oh, I do mean experience with qualia, how red feels, not just the processes of some input-output relation. If experience emerges from a particular physical process, then this process must build on physical properties that are experiential themselves. There is no miraculous, miraculous emergence. You know, if, if, a, if a line four segments into a square and all the segments are black, then the square cannot all of a sudden be red. So that the square becomes red, the segments have to be red, the die lined. Otherwise, there's some miracle going on. And that's the core of this, the core of the essence of this uh, micro uh, point there. Now, uh, I do distinguish these two physical domains from the left to the right. Now, on the, on the left side, I, I, I give it the symbol, qualia, doesn't even deserve a symbol. It doesn't des deserve a letter. It has no structure. I just give it red, just to get some impression there. It does not have any physics on this side. The physics is on the other side, on the psychological version, on the access version, on net blocks, access psychology uh, or consciousness. I've heard it several times today. The psychological, the, the, the qualia connected with the processing of our brain. It's on the right side. That has got physics, structure, physiology, biology, etc. On the, on the left, there is nothing but the pure experience. I think uh, uh, this point has to be stressed out again because it's quite often it's not accepted as such. This is an extremely, extremely radical, going down to the radics of biology and life altogether. Okay, now, perception, inspection of our own bodily responses, because there's always quite something wrong as well. We do not perceive the outside of our world, not at all. But what we perceive, if this is an organism or our brain, the, the red circle up there, and this is a kind of structure from the outside. How it actually works, I'm sorry, I, I have some German names there, but it just means surrounding. Okay. How it works actually, we have to interact whatever there is outside. And this interaction leaves some traces in us, in the circle, in our brain. And we get this point and we reconstruct from our own observation, observing our own brain, I've heard that also this morning, observing our own brain, we make an inference to the quality outside, to that uh, triangle there. Okay, we, as long as it's connected with us, we can project qualia into this kind of reconstruction, and the triangle appears to be blue. Finally, we, we, we assume there is a world outside with some object, physics outside. It's the consensus box of emerging from our subjective experience that is literally outside, and we call real physics. Okay, now the mirror images. There are two domains on the left and on the right. And uh, everyone knows that mirror image. If you scratch yourself on, on your left side of the head, the person in the mirror scratches with the right hand. With the right hand. Uh, it's strange mirrors, strange. And they are 
an inside-out relation, but in a particular way. And I think that's all there is, but both, between both physical sides again. Okay, it goes down to molecules, not just to persons. And I will go into the dynamics of these molecules for a couple of minutes. <coughs> okay, now when uh, Jakob is my grandson, a uh, very nice guy. <laughs> he came home from kindergarten, he's about this size, so I'll make it short. Huh? I mean, most, most people know this anyway, this phenomenon, um, because uh, he learned to write down his name and make a drawing of his face. Now, that was, the, that was a drawing. Yeah? That's, uh, of course, you can guess that uh, Jakob is the mirror writing down there, as well as his own image. Then I turned it just around. I inverted it. It's an inversion. In this case, I do not have to make a rotation. And I can read Jakob perfectly right, and I can put the Jakob's uh, drawing in front of a mirror, and he writes his name very well. Now, when Jakob writes, when I ask Jakob, please, Jakob, write your name just from imagery, not with a template, just uh, because you have learned to write your name. He starts writing it in the mirror image. And many children do this, but they lose this in the, in, in the round about the age of five years. This ability gets lost. But when he writes, when, when I ask him to copy his name from a template where I put on Jakob, he writes it in the normal way. He imagines the right way, but executes a mirror in its exec executional system. And then he finally, He's happy as ever with Jacob there, and everything is okay. That's interesting because it doesn't demand anything from him. He does it very naturally. And he thinks he writes Jacob right, but he does involve in mirror writing. Yeah. I've been engaged with this mirror type of behavior. I'm sorry, I have to take a short drink. for many years, and I found the mirror relation in behavior of animals, in the organization of the nervous system at all scales, it's just hard to recognize it. I find it in the organization of the cortex. You know, there are many mirror-related organizational points there. I find it in the difference between ascending and top-down processes in the brain. I find it in, in connectomics, in the connectome between all these stations there. That's a connectome of the avian brain. The, the knots are, the lines, are related by a kind of mirror of reflection. But, but you don't really see it. It's hard to find. Hard to find. It has been found sometimes, but it's hard to find. Okay. The picture in short. Uh, Again, this is the symbol, I have to use something. I could put all red all over the place. The symbol, how it feels to experience red. The seed of experience, I might want to call it. The seed. And it has to be related to brain processes on the right side. They're on the physical side. And I'm using a symbol for the action potentials or a sequence of action potentials. So you have to, uh, uh, the brain for me is just a mapping, mapping of all currents in the, in the history preceding a moment of time, so t smaller than t zero, into the presence on, or absence of an action potential for one cell. That's, that's a, short, a short neuralistic summary, but that's on the right side. And we have to find out uh, now what could possibly be this kind of crossing, and this is the, uh, the radical difference between two completely incompatible issues, the mirror image, related by mirror reflection. So if that works, if I can combine the red one with the action potential, I get a smile in my face. 
I have some emotional or cognitive experience on the right side. But how could this work? How could this work there in the middle? Now, we have to resolve the brain a little bit into its more functional uh, constituents because uh, action potential are a result of the cooperation of molecules. And the molecules are ion channels um, aligned and organized along the membranes of excitable cells. So I'm putting a, a symbol here and we are focusing on that little bit of this ion channel, just a small domain. Actually, we just need about 20 atoms to define this cage, the cage that houses the ions and controls the flush and is selective to the ions. So it does two things. It selects one ion over the other one and allows an enormous uh, transduction up, up, how people say it, up to the limit of diffusion to about 10 to 8 ions per second. And I want to concentrate on that, because uh, if there is a tight connection between what I call qualia on the left and the signaling pattern on the, on, the, on the right, then it's most likely, and that's my suggestion, occurring in this within the small molecules, where conduction combines, or selective con conduction actually is regulated. Okay. Well, I do find something there that is compatible. So I'm going a little bit more in physics now and some experimental issues and make a summary later on. Uh, well, iron conduction in short. So I'm showing here potassium ion, potassium ion that goes through this filter region of, of the ion channel. And this, this is the lining of the atoms here basically made from oxygens, from carbonyl groups, the lining with its electrons. And there's an electronic transition from a configuration which is called N to anti-pi of the next carbonyl group above. It's a the, the, the N are non-binding electrons. They are kind of hang around at the oxygen. And when they make the transition, they go over to a binding connection to the carbonyl uh, carbon atom. Uh, and that's well established that the frequency of this electronic transition correlates with the transduction rate of, of these ions. So what people say is the occupancy state of the potassium channel filter region correlates highly with the n pi transition of the carbonyl groups. So together with the uh, controlling the conduction, we have something more permanent within the protein because the, the, the ions are the mobile parts, they leave again, they go out from, the, from inside to outside in that case. But what is remaining is a change in the electronic configuration of the hosting, what do you say, hosting, hosting? protein, okay? Now, this is going to be my candidate for the transition. But now I try to give the left side some structure. Uh, complete subjectivity, I model as something inside, and the other world is outside. That's perhaps the most simple model. Um, if I take the inside within a circle, I, I could use an inversion relation to the outside. But if I even increase the circle's diameter very largely, indefinitely large, I get a straight line there that delineates the left side from the right side in a conceptual way now, in a conceptual way. Okay? Now, at this point, there is no experience. The red point is gone and the phase is gone, the brain still works, but without experience. So experience now, I put it back now, I have extended the circle and I get the reflection between the left side and the right side. But uh, remember the boundary is, is like in the mirror image, it cannot be transmitted easily at all. 
there's no, there's no way to go through the mirror, even if Alice tries very hard. Uh, okay. But there, now I'm recovering the redness of red with this error. It's this, it is the, I'm um, sorry for that, five more minutes. Schedule and no questions, so okay. Yeah. Then I have to, I have to jump through. I, um, I expected this that I cannot present this within twenty minutes. So the redness in red is the transition between both physical domains related by mirror re reflection. That's the essence of that point. And how it can be done is simply to go along a non-orientable surface. In other words, I'm using a Möbius band here. This is the diagram, the topology of a Möbius band. And I'm looking for this Möbius band in, in the ion channel, and I fi find the Möbius band here. It looks like that. It can be uh, identified as a Möbius band with four rungs and one loop. Uh, OK, now I have a non-observable left side no observable physical right side. If you can take the left side into the right side, you have an anti-omeric structure where you have a left, and let's say an L and T amino acid. But it, it's not necessary, otherwise it's just one structure. Okay, I have to jump over my simulation model and the diagrams, I find it in dynamics as well. This would be the dynamical part there. Uh, finally, what I do find resembles very interestingly some of the structures that mathematicians have recently suggested. For instance, I'm losing log geometry for my dynamics, didn't have time to line this out. I get something like a maximum plus group algebra there, which reminds me about tropical geometry. On the left, I have probably just the shadow from physics on the right, which is complex and the shadow perhaps reflected by a symplectic geometry and algebra. So if mathematics, that's the final conclusion, uh, has a similar structure as my brain dynamics that I'm suggesting, then mathematics depends on biology. It follows biology. If we had a different brain, we would have a different mathematics. Thank you. <laughs>